Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on February 19th, 2025. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to The Daily Do, giving you your daily space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here, looking at amazing images of our sun for the past 48 hours. Only seeing C-class solar flares and nothing major. No major plasma filaments or CMEs detected. Looking here, cresting into view. Quiet regions moving in and as well, coronal hole building. And a couple plasma filaments to watch as they're dancing around the surface there. Looking out, going some wicked fast plasma loops dancing around. And as well, active sunspot region. As there are five Earth facing right now. Having a look at multi spectrum, pointing out the last 48 hours of events, and as well the coronal hole, bottom left hand side showing the magnetic field on the sun during a coronal hole event. As we have coronal holes turning away and a small one turning into view in the southern hemisphere of the sun. Another light here, just stunning imagery and grateful to be able to share this open source media with you all. All images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed with daily events worldwide. And thank you so much for pressing play, taking time out of your day to stay aware and prepared. Having a look here at the sunspot regions in motion. As we've got quite a few black spots on our sun right now, I put on my eclipse glasses yesterday and I was able to see these sunspots on our sun. Just amazing to be able to do that. Having a look here at active sunspot regions 39, 98, and 96 are ones to watch. Current space weather conditions, we are under minor G1 geomagnetic storm impacts from the coronal hole wind stream which accelerated our wind speeds upwards of 650 kilometers per second. Right now, they're at 481 kilometers per second, which is still above average. Showing the X-ray flux here, moderate C-class solar flares throughout the day, three of them. Proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity hopped up to a KP5 today with a couple sharp solar wind blasts. Space Weather Prediction Center showing here the most recent space weather spiral right up until the 24th as we do have some geomagnetic instability coming in from the incoming coronal hole as visible in the bottom graph there top graph no cmes did the no cmes have been detected so stay tuned as anything can happen at any time Having a look here at the real-time solar wind right now as it is coming down over 520 kilometers per second earlier throughout the day. Let's just go back a week to the coronal hole impact which started about three or four days ago. As you can see, the solar winds came in at 645 kilometers per second at one point, maybe topping out at about 690. But the density was up just over the last couple of days at the end of the wind stream magnetic field seems to be hanging on having a look at Alaska 2 showing the last 48 hours of cosmic energies leaving our sun and again no CMEs detected Mercury leaving view on the left hand side and here's a look at tonight's aurora forecast and as well tomorrow's as it will be a little bit more prevalent tonight than tomorrow. Now let's see. Earthquakes the last 24 hours. As we're sitting low, pretty pretty low actually, just under 200 earthquakes, 24 hour period. A couple deep ones here, Huma, Tonga, 4.3, and as well a 4.6, but not like the regular deep earthquakes. We've seen some action here throughout the day today. 5.6 here, Papua New Guinea, and as well a 5.7 Indonesia, Fak Fak, Indonesia, 5.7 magnitude earthquake. 
rocking all across Indonesia right now. Deep quakes from Luatolo over to Krak Krakatoa. Notable earthquake there. Tuwata, Japan, 4.3. And as well, Alaska rocking a 4.7. Ivanov Bay, Alaska, 74 kilometer depth though. Heads up as there is some volcanic activity, minor swarms through the Aleutian Islands. Four mile road, 3.6. Looking across the United States, nothing major to report. Notable earthquakes here at the Big Island. 3.5 and a 3.1 earthquake. Here is a look at infrared imagery of the caldera right now as things are heating up in the center of this summit caldera. From the last eruption, we're probably up another three or four, maybe even six meters above its height just a couple weeks ago. Stay tuned for the next eruption as it is building and things are heating up at the surface there. USGS, as I said, reporting 202 earthquakes right now, 24-hour period, no major swarms or notable earthquakes to talk about right now, except for the notable earthquakes in Hawaii, which I think are notable, probably awaiting another eruption. Continual activity all around California Bay. The basin, minor seismicity from Yellowstone northwest to the Pacific. Carrying on here, Caribbean Plate 4.4, as well as 5.6 there, Chile yesterday, Talal. Greece is still seeing seismicity there, 4.8 and 4.0 throughout the day today. It is really spreading out through that region, awaiting something massive to erupt. That's a look at the last 24 hours. Here's a glance at the last seven days for shakers, movers across the planet. Largest being now the 5.8 in Fakpak, Indonesia. The last seven days, as well as 6.0 there, Ethiopia, African plate still ramming up into the Mediterranean. And this is a little bit concerning. Earthquakes piling up, Pacific, Central West. You live in an earthquake prone zone, just be ready, aware and prepared, have a plan. That's what this is all about. Hashtag no fear here, just aware and prepared. Carrying on here, let's have a look at our air quality forecast brought to you by active and erupting volcanoes overlooking the Pacific Ocean, increasing SO2 particulates coming through the Aleutian Islands and as well the regular regions, Guatemala, Mexico, Kamchatka, Japan. And then overlooking Southeast Asia and Africa, notable plumes coming out of Indonesia, Solomon Islands, and as well in the Southern Hemisphere, something has erupted. Towards Antarctica, I know the Heard volcano is in this region, maybe just south of that British Isle. But large SO2 plume here, forecasted, sweeping right up into southern parts of Australia for the long range. Then overlooking Africa, Europe, notable plumes still coming out of Central Africa, towards Ethiopia, and as well, the North Atlantic, not sure where all that SO2 is coming from, but it is still piling up and swirling around our northern hemisphere. Now let's have a look at world weather brought to you by windy.com. Massive low pressure systems in the North Atlantic right now. They're going to be whipping themselves around Iceland and as well, waves of moisture heading towards Great Britain, um, Ireland, and as well, the Mediterranean eventually when low pressure systems break through. North America, one major system here in the long range that could be a doozy coming out of the Gulf, racing up the eastern seaboard. Could see a nor'easter. But look at the size of that low in the North Atlantic. Still, just some very strange forecasts that we've seen over the last few years with these low pressure systems. They get bigger, 
They get stronger. They maintain their velocity longer. Carrying on here, South Africa. Multiple days of low-pressure systems and rains and possible cyclone for southern parts of Madagascar. Australia. Northern parts is going to be the most affected for weather throughout the week until the long range. Possible cyclone raking down the east coast of Australia for the long range, heading towards Sydney. And then overlooking the Pacific Ocean, we've got a rain train heading into the British Columbia coast. Higher elevations will see a lot of snow. One, two, three, four. There's got to be eight low pressure systems forecasted here. The rain train and the snow amounts will be tremendous. So stay tuned. Alaska, BC, you've got a stormy week ahead of you with multiple low pressure systems. Now let's have a look at our upper level winds, which depict our polar vortex for winter 2025. And this is what it looks like right now as it's still oblonged and reaching down to the Gulf of Mexico. Extremely cold temperatures sweeping across Canada and as well the United States. Parts of central United States were in the minus double digits. Unbelievable times and grateful to have you along for this journey. This journey. Again, thank you so much for pressing play, taking time out of your day to stay aware and prepared. We're getting really close, my friends and family. We're growing daily. And thank you so much for your help with the growth. Let's grow to 90,000 followers. We're on our way. Keep sharing and caring. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. We'll see you next video.